with us we have left inner care saying pvsm uism avsm and ysm now i'll request jana chaturvedi to continue with the conversation with general kiat thank you sir Uh, good evening uh, participants uh, to today's webinar there are two categories of soldiers who are one who are doers in second category which is little uncommon is of those soldiers who are not only doers but are scholars too they are the people who think ahead of their times and are generally ready with the solutions to the problems well before the onset of the problem itself for such people adversities are opportunities and they find solutions of such problems mm. with their intellectual capability and execute the plans with perfection today we have one such scholar soldier with us who is an epitome of all that makes a great soldier and with his intellectual capability his propensity to take risk his idealism and above all his commitment to country indian army infantry rajput regiment and his men he is an proud to his family his state manipur and his regiment he is none other than lieutenant general dr k h singh pvsm uism avsm ysm it's a matter of great privilege for me to introduce him to this august gathering after getting commissioned into the rajput regiment in 1978 he has practically attended every possible appointment in the indian army needless to add that excellence is his style and sincerity is his signature no wonder after retiring in 2017 he has been giving back to the society especially his state manipur in particular all his experiences of service to the nation has been chronicled by him in the form of an autobiography with the title making of a general a himalayan echo i found this book extremely fascinating a lesson in a thought that nothing is impossible if you decide to do it it's a matter of honor for strife that, that the general has agreed to share his rich experience with us and take few questions at the end of our conversation welcome general kate singh to strife i gone through your book and indeed i found it quite riveting i have some queries which during the course of our conversation i'll raise i hope it is all right with you Uh, good evening, sir. I am most grateful to you, General Chaturvedi, sir. He has been very, very kind with words because he happened to be my directing staff in two thousand two in the man defense management course. So thank you very much, and I also thank uh, Shri Vavina, uh, uh, Colonel R P Singh, who has uh, initiated uh, this event. I am most grateful to you both and all the. Uh, participants here sir for uh, this kind gesture thank you very much sir. uh kech by your own admission you were physically not very strong when you started but you worked very hard to not only become physically strong but you did some great adventure activities like climbing mountains including ganjanjanga which to my mind as a, as a climber myself i think that's one of the most difficult peak and uh, rafting in the uh, ice cold water of uh, uh, indus and that too when you were commanding officer uh, firstly uh, how difficult it was to do that and secondly what message would you like to give to the youngsters of today about role of adventure in the character building so it's a uh... Uh, thank you very much for the first question, sir. First and foremost, I do believe that in the military one has to be physically fit, whether he is a junior most jawan or a senior general. There is no doubt about it. And as you said, that I wasn't physically very 
uh, strong in the school days, childhood. And uh, I had a lot of these uh, medical issues also in the beginning. But I tried to, um, I tried to make up for all my physical deficiencies through, uh, through constant practice for improvement, self-improvement. I'll quote example of, I was very scared of heights. So I took on to skydiving. I'm a skydiver myself. I took up mountaineering as hobby in the Himalayas. I have almost trekked the entire length of Himalayas, taken part in uh, various mountaineering expeditions. So I think this was that self-improvement exercise that uh, I did at least in order to to, uh, to improve oneself. And I found that um, once you decide to improve physical condition by striving constantly uh, for years and years, I think you do achieve a significant um, amount of physical fitness because physical fitness is not just about physical fitness. It is about the mental strength as well. Yes. So, so therefore, once you make up your mind, uh, it's a it's a pleasure to be physically and mentally fit. I mean, you are happier. Your uh, command is happier to see you with them wherever. So I think so. It's a, uh, it has to be done in the military. Come what may, everyone has to be physically and mentally fit. Uh, uh, for the participants, when he did his uh, uh, skydiving jump. His uh, main parachute didn't open for a long time. He reached almost 700 feet just above the ground. And he could hear people, Are, dekho emergency hai, jaldi bulao, kisi ko jaldi bulao. And it was a providence. And uh, as Napoleon said, that we don't want only a general, we want a lucky general. So we had uh, KH uh, with us today, describing all this. And this is definitely a lesson for everyone uh, who dons uniform that his uh, stomach is not out. Uh, in fact, uh, I quote one uh, uh, Air Chief Marshal Krishna Swami, when some foreign delegation was to go and he started, he says, get the profile picture of the officers and jiska jiska paid barta, he says, inko bar karo. So he says, sir, but he's very, very good. He has about 4,000 years of, uh, 4,000 hours of uh, flying experience. So he said, bhagao yaar, kuch nahi. We get the second best. So that is the way life is. Uh, another thing which is interesting, which, which I saw in your uh, book, that's uh, about the camaraderie. Uh, uh, normally, it is the hallmark of every uh, soldier, every unit life. And, and I remember in that uh, uh, Chaudhary Memorial, uh, that uh, battle physical fitness uh, uh, competition, you carried, uh, and you were just 46 kg, and you carried another 46 kg of uh, another Jawan. Well, that makes it very, very difficult. Uh, and men to uh, respect such a person would always be there. Can you share this experience? Uh, sir, as you said, uh, I was actually, as a lieutenant, I was 46 kgs. And uh, this General Choudhury Trophy, in which nine paras special forces was also taking part in the 25 infantry division, I recollect that. And we beat them in this running. Uh, in the physical fitness running part. And uh, it was just about uh, 500 or less than a kilometer when one of my boys fell down. And I was thinking that maybe we may lose this because of this. So I picked up the, you know, every man had to carry about 23 kgs of uh, pack. So straight away, I picked up that uh, pack of my boys. I told the boys, you carry this boy and then we have to be in the finishing line. So actually, our Jawans are very, very, very impressionable. You know, it's very easy to impress. In fact, because of this one act, in fact, they thought, you know, Sa was the fittest guy for the next five, 10 years, I didn't have to prove myself. So it actually, so uh, this makes you that um, uh, the feeling of camaraderie and our Jawans don't expect uh, to do great things every day. Just one uh, example of this kind. And they are, they are so good, actually, Jawans, and they feel that you are a superhero, which I wasn't in any case. I have told you that I was a weakling of sorts. But 
this one act, uh, they made me a hero of this kind. You know, Saab can do anything. I mean, this is how that camaraderie, uh, if you are talking about this particular incident, I must say. Uh, actually, uh, this is the most in, in interesting part that uh, it was an instant decision on your part where uh, you uh, are trained to be a great soldier. A great soldiers are always heroes. And heroship is does not that you decide on one day that, okay, from tomorrow I will be hero. No, you will be zero only. You will be hero only if the, when the situation comes and if you respond to it. And you responded. My compliments to you. Uh, another quality of yours, which is quite evident in this uh, entire book, that is the courage of conviction. You stood by your values, be it that uh, uh, your uh, RO uh, Mesbel issue or some such thing, staff college. So when I was seeing this staff course, which is actually a very important part of any officer's growth, and that time you are not very senior also, but uh, you um, uh, stood up, up to a ground for someone who spoke ill of uh, uh, unit and army and troops and all those things. And uh, that is something very, very great. And uh, can you narrate that incident? Uh, sir, um, actually, sir, I, uh, I mean, you are making me almost like a perfect officer, which I'm not. <laughs> I, but I will share. Um, what happened was um, that uh, it was about um, uh, the insurgency in uh, Northeast India. So one of the generals, uh, I won't take name, he came for a talk in the Defense Services Staff College. I think it was uh, DSSC 45. And he uh, said that, um, it was, um, uh, he talked about various uh, issues of how to handle the insurgency situations. And uh, uh, he said that they were, you know, sometimes they have to use uh, liquor and, you know, all kinds of things in order to control the population. That was one, uh, one aspect of that. And uh, another, which I think I mentioned also, which I objected that, you know, sir, this cannot be the way you, we, uh, we carry out counterinsurgency manner by injecting uh, such, um, such kind of um, you know, alcohol or drugs or something. That's not the way we do, uh, we must do in, in the army or you know, this is not ethical at all. This was one. The second part was about the, uh, about the, about the infantry. Uh, one of uh, the uh, another general said that uh, you know uh, those of you who don't uh, understand the mechanized warfare, you are going to be a liability in this army. So I stood up and I said, okay, sir, I have not even seen a tank except in a movie." And uh, out of my eleven years, I have done eight years in the field area, operational area. So do I become a liability in the future? Then I might as well change my change my armor service. <laughs> so, so this kind of a sometimes we have to speak up, but in a polite manner, not in a confrontation yes. kind of a, a manner. I went wrong in many uh, places where. Um, if the intention is to confront somebody, then I think it is wrong. It is not officer-like. Yes, but if yes. the aim is a very, very healthy discussion on the perfect and stand your ground and be ready to face the consequences of your actions, either written or either spoken, be ready. That's what I keep telling my officers also. I mean, you speak, but be ready. You must be polite. You must put it forthright as a military person. Don't be afraid, but see the timing of how you do, see the situation and put it across politely and be prepared to face all consequences. This is how I used to say, even as a, as a core commander, I used to tell them, anyone who doesn't speak up, I never spoke, I said, I suffered a lot. Please speak up. Otherwise, how do I know who you are? What are your thought processes? What uh, you are saying has got a, a very profound meaning. In fact, our uh, scriptures also talk of it. 
and in bradari smriti there is a very famous quote i'll just quote the last line it say and which i which which means that whether you lose or win or anything so in in sanskrit it says nyayat patah pravachalant padam nadira when you are on the path of righteousness you should never tremble you should walk and the entire world will support you that's one and probably the some of the some of us are not uh, intellectually that's why i'm saying are talking of you uh, uh, after all ukraine war has proved that uh, <laughs> without in pindri car game will keep happening <laughs> so uh, when i was just seeing this thing you you kept your mind there and uh, you had a tenure as a battalion commander in ime uh, and you had a very strong uh, uh, presence when you were in uh, staff course and you are not that one of those that okay chalta hai aisa sab ho raha hai chalte chalne do uh, sanu ki attitude you did not have so in your book you talk about ethical leadership and things like that so what i am saying that what changes do you think nda training and uh, um, uh, um, uh, staff college uh, should think of because nda the motto is service before self so if it service before self then uh, somewhere we are going wrong in case if we are creating a self centered people that's what my question to you would be sir um, i think it's a brilliant kind of a discussion as far as ethical officership is concerned my dissertation in ndc as well as in uh, during your uh, direct, uh, directing staff day sir uh, ldmc was on military ethics i am of the firm opinion that an officer can never be an officer the true military leader without ethical uh, uh, conduct also like you know without character qualities this is something that i have been very very harsh as far as um, uh, my command has been ethical uh, practices and um, what i found in national defense academy and staff college almost a similar findings and uh, which i think uh, i forgot whether i mentioned or not when i was the commandant infantry school i did a uh, i got some studies done what from the that? junior command course you mentioned you mentioned that junior command jc downwards about uh, the findings are not very very complimentary to our organization so i didn't actually publish it because when we talk about ethical leadership and inspirational uh, leadership uh, i found that uh, the junior officers of i am talking only about junior command and downwards uh, i think we have a long way to go so your particular question is on the national defense academy and dssc it was like a, do more of the same thing i mean progressive human you know intellectual or um, you know your you call it for any except for the physical part and uh, to some extent some academic uh, content i thought the grooming of the senior uh, of the cadets in the national defense academy and staff college should have been far far more modern for the preparing them for the future whereas i actually told the nda commandant that i uh, and also the commandant of this defense services staff college that i hope we are not preparing for the last war because i always felt that it was there was no change in syllabus right from almost the first jsw course till uh, you know i saw uh, the cadets uh, with whom i was um, i mean i was responsible for training most of them either have finished their uh, command tenures or battalions i used to tell them that i mean this is what you have to do you have to be technically sound you have to be mentally Uh, mental you know agility you have to be you, you have to be scient- you have, we have to have scientific temper and we have to see um, little beyond what happened yesterday i mean we have to be able to sense the uh, m- military character of our uh, uh, people in to that extent i 
I mean, I felt that in uh, staff college or something, we should have had, you know, a content of uh, HRD, human resources development, you know, leadership and all, which we used to do in defense management course, because they are doing it after, we are doing it after command over uh, this, thing, whereas the most critical command is the battalion command or the unit command. So these were the things I had uh, recommended and uh, uh, and the National Defense Academy, I remember Air Marshal Trika was the uh, commandant. He was very, very uh, uh, receptive to it, but uh, somehow that time National Defense Academy was under, uh, you know, empty directorate of the army. So, the, uh, so there was a little communication gap and uh, I said, okay, I can't change the syllabus. I can't change uh, the cadets, but let me change the officers first. I mean, I had some 14, 15 officers and all, as a SI army also, uh, another set of another uh, 10 to 12 officers. So I said, okay, my sphere of influence is these guys, about 20 officers, let me, let me at least try to inculcate some kind of a modern thinking and uh, you know, talking about a little scientific temper, uh, not a repeat of the same thing, which have been going on for the last uh, 20, 30 years. So similar in staff college also, you, I mean, we were doing uh, things of World War II vintage. And uh, I truly felt that, you know, it's not going to add much to uh, the, the future grooming of uh, officers as yours. I mean, I'll, I see uh, commanding officers as the backbone of Indian military. So therefore, we are preparing nothing to make him better CEOs. So this is what I reflected in my book, sir. Uh, in fact, uh, what you are saying has got a lot of meaning. And I, I sense that uh, one of the reasons is uh, lack of self-belief. People allow, people are taught to not to, to take their fear, their counsel. That, and this is where the senior military leadership will have to take a call that juniors are encouraged, if, even if he commits. And you have displayed that. I mean, your uh, uh, when I go through the book, that uh, incident of Vios, uh, uh, when you were infantry commandant, you stood by them. And that is how you went up to Supreme Court. I mean, that is something which is great. And uh, uh, my second thing is that syllabus change. You look at it, we are preparing for the last war. Armenia-Azerbaijan war has proved beyond point that if you prepare for last war, then you are sure to lose that. So therefore, this is something which Indian armed forces, I would say, that they, they will have to take a call. Uh, it, somehow, I mean, not a very uh, salutary comment I'm going to make. It has become the uh, that uh, taking shortcuts is a uh, uh, it's a function of opportunity, which should not be. We should be uh, help people to remain steadfast uh, in our uh, commitment to truth and righteousness. Uh, uh, now we are talking of a certain very interesting thing which you have spoken and which operation I'll talk uh, and you can cover that also. One of the reasons uh, from 1947, we had been uh, uh, till see this recent uh, China standoff, intelligence had been a uh, albatross around our neck. Every time we say, and we try to do some wishy-washy that uh, DIA is made, and I have had a privilege to serve in that organization and all, but nothing that the intelligence acquisition, dissemination, both are not of the highest order. Today, the kind of tools and which are available, uh, you can pinpoint. And when you talk to people, they say, some officer says, That is nonsense. We don't have to know what is GOC's khana kya khara hai, usne Sheri Rahman ko Asif Zardari ne kya bula. That is not important. What is important is that actionable intelligence, how it is gathered and real time, how it is disseminated. Uh, you have spoken on this subject. Can you share your views? I think that will be very useful for the... Uh, and in this case, uh, I would recommend that you do take into account that there are certain intelligences other than armed forces, MI and uh, others, police, that MAC has come up and all those things. All these put together in case if they can do some better arrangement. 
do you have some views on this kind of a subject sir um, having uh, commented on the staff college and national defense academy i am told that lot of improvements are taking place or have taken place similarly in the intelligence domain uh, whatever i know uh, even as a core commander i found that we have um, significantly developed uh, capabilities uh, after the kargil episode kargil war uh, we have developed but i think um, uh, i have retired nearly 6 years ago but my feeling is that whatever improvement we have made whatever strides we have made is still um inadequate inadequate that is my uh, i may be wrong inadequate for the future challenges which are right now immediate future challenges what is happening and my interaction with the intelligence agencies um, of you know our uh, national intelligence agencies uh we need some homework to actually further improve on it i mean there is still my as a, uh, my uh, opinion stands even today that we still need to improve upon it in fact kej i was just reading in a america intelligence had a higher prestige even as against us so uh, uh, and here uh, unless you start giving uh, because i remember in some of the uh, organizations where i was that five chap saying same thing and was six chap saying not saying same thing six chap is discounted so i think we will have to uh, take into account <coughs> how do you um, get the truth out of this and uh, be prepared for that kind of a thing uh, related with this is uh, i will not uh, let you go away we till we till we uh, you share your experience of 5770 i think in musharraf also in his book has mentioned uh, general malik has also mentioned in his book uh, about this operation which i think had a very profound bearing in the overall kargil operations and uh, in this uh, certain things about the, the the way you look to talk to junior leaders your junior leaders one who was not even from your unit uh, uh shamil sinha uh, and yet uh, they perform so well and uh, you were guiding them from down below uh, can you share some uh, implication of this operations and how difficult it was to do it uh sir thank you very much uh, for asking this um, to narrate i'll just take about a few a few minutes to say this uh before i say this i must um, again i i am uh, totally overwhelmed by the memories by the bravery and uh, dedication of all those who were involved not only of my own unit plus the those attached troops uh, who were under my command so my salute to each one of them particularly those who are who uh, after the action uh, some of them uh, attend martyrdom my uh, salute my homage to them uh sir this was um, uh, as you rightly said it was musharraf's plan to actually um uh defang indian army's uh you know position in the siachen that was one of his aims siachen and turtok what we call as areas um uh, in the uh, in the siog valley so uh, musharraf also has written it himself that it was one of my aims and uh, we didn't know what was his aims as a battalion commander we hardly knew what was happening you know at the higher level but one thing is sure uh, that um, this operation of my battalion capture of 5770 in the area just south of NJ nine eight four two, just adjacent to NJ nine eight four two. All of us know what is NJ nine eight four two. Was according to a U.S. Naval War College research, which is in the public domain. They said that capture of Tiger Hill, Tololing, and of five seven seven zero, Pakistan Army had decided that this war cannot be won. because of these three so 5770 stands out as one of the turning points your question was can you 
further say anything. I, I only say that it is the guts and the glow. The, most of us fight for our own, uh, our um, country, our flag, but in the real battle, I found it is about camaraderie, it is about our unit ijat, it is about self-respect, it is about, uh, you know, uh, trust in each other, in the officer, amongst the, this kind of a, um, what you just said, the rapport between the officers and the JCOs and the belief, the confidence that, you know, if something happens to me, my officer, my commanding officer, my officers are there. That actually wins the war, a battle. I won't say war, I'll say that is the deciding factor in any battle. That is my, it may, may or may not be in the future, but at least my experience is that. And anything can be achieved. If this unit motivation, the leadership, and with the personal example of the officers are there, I think Indian Army or Indian military can achieve anything. This is my take. Sir. Uh, in fact, uh, for the information of uh, audience, a very interesting thing in this happened. On 25th uh, uh, June, he was uh, supposed, they, they went for attack and weather became foul. So they were thinking of what to do next. So one of the JCO said, Mangal ke din karo, to bilkul bajrang bali hamare saath honge. And uh, obviously the, when they went, a day later, it was Sunday and then Monday, uh, Tuesday when they went, well, it was a clockwork position, this operation, and it did have a very, very st strategic bearing on the entire operations. And uh, I think the uh, leadership counts hell of a lot. And uh, uh, I am aware that uh, the kind of thing which is there, and we have uh, one of the co-commander of that area is also, I can see him. Uh, uh, welcome, uh, Rakesh, uh, you, are, you, are, you are there uh, to know that. Uh, this, uh, uh, in fact, uh, the journey goes on. This is what you have done is something tremendous. And subsequently, you kept growing. Uh, the same area you had uh, commanded the division, you have commanded the corps. And uh, all this thing, uh, uh, you saw the complete thing changing from a subaltern to a corps commander in the same area you have seen. And, uh, uh, but then you also kept evolving. And what I found the most interesting part of it is that you kept evolving even after your after you re-attired. I won't say retire, re-attired. And you've completed your PhD. Wow, what a, what a great thing. Many of us attempted and left. But then uh, my salute to you that you completed your PhD. And the kind of contribution you are making to the society is something tremendous, which is quite evident in the in the book, in the last chapter, uh, can you share uh, that? How was this change? Because many of us, uh, once we leave uniform, uh, we are not being able to come to terms with the civilian way of working. But you have not only come to terms with the civilian way of working in their uh, state PSC board. You, when you were chairman of that, you made changes, and even now you are looking after certain uh, students and all those things. So, can you share your activities uh, post retirement? Uh, sir, thank you very much. Can I just go back to that your uh, 5770, sir? Since yes, you yes, said, uh, my Subhada major said, sir, it, uh, I mean, let's do it on, you know, Tuesday, and once a day. And also it happened to be 27th of June. The success, the capture was on 27th of June. And I was commanding 27 Rasput. So it was a double... Yes. Uh, and it was also the day of uh, 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 birthday of Prophet Muhammad. Okay. You know, so everything, uh, everything was uh, conniving. In fact, universe was uh, stars were conniving to uh, make my battalion attack uh, successful. I'll say that God's were. But uh, the. Having said that, sir, this was, I thought I'll just talk about that 27 Rasput and 27 June and uh, that uh, Anuman's, uh, Anuman's day was that these two together actually was a force multiplier, I thought. As the same physics, it, was a, it resonated. It resonated, uh, natural, yes. Natural frequency, the, the applied frequency equals yes, to the yes, sir. Yes, sir. and then it goes. Well, coming, 
sir, coming to your question about the, uh, about the post-retirement or uh, uh, re-retirement, as you call it. Actually, sir, I had moved my baggage to settle down uh, in uh, Greta Noida after Mao. I had moved my baggage. I thought I'll settle down there and uh, play some golf and relax. But the, as I said, I was telling uh, you know, Jen Pandey that uh, the pull factor here, so many things in Northeast India and so many things in Manipur, Nagaland, all this. I mean, the pull factor was a little greater. So uh, just as uh, I joined the uh, Public Service Commission as a chairman, I mean, it's a unending kind of a contribution one can make, whether big or small. And after, the, uh, after doing a PhD, uh, I was um, able to convince the UGC chairman that, you know, why don't you open a Department of National Security Studies here in the Manipur University, which he promptly did. And so they requested me to be advisor and also I'm in the visiting capacity there. And I still continue even today also, I was taking a uh, lecture regularly on national security. Aim is to bring these people, the young people, then media, then society at large, understand, make them understand what is security all about? What is insurgency? Why notice is having all this? So this is actually the, my ulterior motive is to, um, for national interest, you know, so that national security and uh, generally integration of the knowledge, that's how I thought I should be able to contribute. And uh, I can share with you also, I've written also in the book, uh, the Naga talks and various uh, ethnic armed groups, which are particularly in Manipur area and Nagaland area. I'm involved in the capacity as a, as a consultative capacity with the center and the state government. So uh, these things also uh, gives me feel younger and also feel good that you're contributing in some way and uh, being a very, very, I'll say that um, uh, military was not initially looked at with very, very uh, attractive uh, to people because of the militancy, because of the insurgency. So I thought the, the image of the military, image of uh, national security apparatus must be made positive. To that extent, I attend hundreds of uh, uh, such interactive programs and all that. So that's how we try to contribute our little uh, mini efforts, I'll say, towards nation building, uh, particularly in the college and the school. So this is what one does, and I'm, I find it uh, is very, very satisfying. It is very, very, uh, you can contribute in small ways in this way. So I thought I'll just uh, since you praise me so much, I didn't deserve that, sir. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, you know, this, uh, what uh, India from for a very long time had been lacking is a strategic culture. And your effort in an in a area which is considered to be remote. I remember during our NDC, uh, I made a uh, comment and which was, uh, which people asked me to withdraw because I said this Kaladan project and all. I said, why should uh, the all policies of government of India should be Delhi centric? Why can't we have industry in the Northeast itself? So somebody said, no, no, you are talking of uh, wrong things and all. I said, I stand by this. And to my mind, this kind of integration, uh, which you are attempting, uh, removing the perceptions of people, because after all, life is full of perceptions only. So with this, and in today's uh, uh, social media uh, driven environment, by God, unless you clear the perceptions, things will go wrong. And that is where the strategic culture which you are trying to imbibe in the youngsters, uh, that's a great service. Uh, we still have also four or five minutes. Anyone, any question? I saw that uh, um, uh, chat box. There's some comments, all right, but no question as such. Anyone uh, wanting to ask a question? Uh, it'll be, uh, I mean, uh, I'm sure uh, the general will uh, be able to. Uh, give uh, some uh, reply to many of those issues which you may have raised. Uh, sir, may, may I come in, sir? Uh, I'm General Sudhakar. Uh, can yes. I? Please, please. 
uh, 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 very warm good evening to the general sir and uh, congratulations general chaturvedi sir for conducting such a very very relevant uh, interactive session i have missed out the major part of it i was in a panel discussion in one of the channels about the ongoing china crisis but um, if i take the liberty of complimenting the general officer uh, that i have read a lot i have heard about you sir and uh, compliments to you but i having served half of my almost close to half of my tenure in north east sir i don't have a question i have only one thing the pfi i just came back from california 4 5 days back sitting over there in the bay area one was getting a bird's eye view or a distant view of what is happening in the indian subcontinent and how the two different lines are actually converging the pfi incidentally also has started showing its ugly ugly face in the northeast particularly in the lower assam sir and it is expanding further towards the northern part towards uh, i would say dibrugarh and uh, uh, to manipur all these places so what in your opinion since you have done so much of uh, uh, having the pulse of the ground what should government of india do particularly for two issues one the siliguri corridor is turning out to be the biggest chicken neck and the threat to keep the seven sisters together is there a case in point to go in for swapping of land and expand or give depth to the siliguri corridor when i talk about this i am giving a direct hint at the pfi footprint expanding along the borders with bhutan bangladesh and nepal sir one second there is a corridor which is going towards dubri side from shrirampur to dubri uh, through bugaigaon and further towards the center portion of guwahati going cutting across to meghalaya towards manipur we also have similar kind of demographic change taking place along the border areas with myanmar there are large number of people who have migrated from my myanmar to mizoram sir almost 40 to 50000 people have come in sir there is a new threat which is emerging what in your opinion the government of india should do to address this particular threat uh sir thank you very much general sudhakar sir a great pleasure meeting you uh i fully endorse your uh, assessment of the situation sir this has been flagged in in a very very i can share with you that uh, at the very very highest uh, decision making bodies um, at least i have given it in writing uh, almost similar suggestions as you are saying uh, i tend to agree uh, that the issue this issue which you have flagged is going to be a very very serious national security threat particularly if a unfriendly kind of a government comes what do you want the in bangladesh we are lucky we have a reasonably friendly government in bangladesh and entire corridor which you described sir come 2020 uh the latest census of 2020 i think 23 is going to be completed there will be certain upheavals there will be certain political contests and also there is bound to be the issues are going bound to come up during next 2 to 3 years if not earlier talking about mizoram your assessment 40 to 50000 is dot on that is official the unofficial figures are almost more than double of that we close our eyes i can also share i have said this publicly in the belt of mizoram manipur border 
the amount the approximate amount of smuggling drug smuggling which is funding all these anti national activities i have discussed this with the highest authority on drug issues it is more than 40000 crores annually oh my god 40000 crores <laughs> most of it is going to anti national elements so therefore whatever you have suggested whatever you have hinted is perfectly in line with my own research and my own assessment to this end i have interacted with people who matter they said they are aware of it they said that they are at it but actually i don't have any i don't have privy to what actually they are doing so this is uh, what needs to be done is that it has to if time has come to ensure that this security apparatus when i say, I, i want say security apparatus some kind of a de-radical de-radicalization has to be attempted some kind of a, a governance issues have to be uh, have to be attempted governance issues it's a wide subject but governance issues means practically in one line i'll say people getting what uh what they deserve to get under a democratic uh country so these have to be done and then also the third point what you what you flagged is about indo myanmar border being a open almost a open border you know fmr we get a free movement yes, region yes, yes, yes so that is um again another factor which is uh, is uh, being used as a uh, Uh, as a facilitator for all these activities of smuggling arms and human smuggling whatever all the bad things you know so uh, this has been flagged many times structurally we need reforms notice council donor and all that they have outlived their utility or they have to we have to change the act so that they are given certain more additional responsibilities today it is all about loan dispensing uh, or, or uh, fund dispensing units all this donor or nsc so i feel that a uh, certain amount of uh, 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 this has to be done political will has to come towards this and this has been discussed with people who matter thank you sir i hope partially i have been able to no no thank you so much sir it's more than adequate this, this is the need uh, is a great uh, attempt of what uh, before, between first and second war uh, uh, that levenstrom which yes. was attempted by germany the similar thing is happening here and i think sooner we become uh, cognizant of it just being cognizant is not enough some act has to be done and this when the action is to be taken some ruthless action will have to be taken so one such action was uh, is going on in assam and similar thing will have to be probably done uh, 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 to address this because northeast that sharil imam's statement that yeah. if we if we can close that the corridor it will be the indian government of india would be on their knees uh, that uh, silivri corridor so these are the things which need to be i think that is a first is that secure uh, there's strategic culture which we talked that demographic changes beat in kashmir where in south of peer panjal is happening and here it is happening all this needs to be addressed that uh, even the ethnic divide uh, which is between myanmar and uh, uh, mizoram and they are coming uh, that also needs to be checked so probably uh, probably it has to be a very very detailed thing which will have to be and i think you have given me an idea in uh, uh, you know, i try, try to uh, address oh, and, uh, as a research project and uh, i'll request sudhakar to probably uh, do that yes. research and we'll request you to be a consultant to on this no, no. now uh, i it's all left for me to say no, thank you no, to the no, good general uh, for so, sharing his valuable time excuse me may i may i yeah Who's... Sir, may I, Brigadier oh, Mohan? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, firstly, Himale, heartiest congratulations on your book, which I read just a fortnight back. Uh, Himale, my question to you is: 
Uh, you know, I served the Assam Rifles for four years. Now, a lot of talk going on about Assam Rifles to be brought under the Ministry of, uh, totally under the Home Ministry, dealing with the Army, alternatively come under the Army. That's my first point. What are your views? Second is that uh, when I was there uh, from 96 to 2000, you're aware, uh, there a lot of local support for the so-called uh, anti-national elements. Well, how much has it waned in last 22 years? I left in 2000. Thanks, Himalaya. Great day, Amula Mohan is my immediate senior in uh, Dur Rasput. My guide, philosopher, thank you very much, sir. You know as much as I know here, your uh, daughter-in-law is from Manipur. So, sir, the first question is, uh, the. I'll take on the, the second question first. Okay. I can assure you, I can assure you that times have changed. Perspectives have changed. Perceptions are changing very fast. And the, un, the security forces, particularly, um, I'll say the, particularly the Central Assam Rifles Army, or even some Central Armed Police Forces, they have done a wonderful job. What is pulling us down in the notice is the governance. So the support the local support for the uh, insurgent groups have reduced significantly. Ulfa is talking about Assam, Ulfa, hardly any support today in Assam. In Nagaland, the ethnic issues, identity issues, and uh, so-called tribal rights, they are fighting for that. But it's not about so much about uh, secession is just to secessionism that they're talking is more to attract, I mean, to have some kind of a uh, reason deter for their existence. So that it is significantly reduced in Manipur. So much right. so, so much so, there is no extortion here. Extortion at the political level, I don't know. But, and in the highways, Taxation, illegal taxation goes on because that is a very complicated affair. But what you saw during your days is nothing compared, uh, what is happening now is nothing compared to what you saw those days. Your, the second point, that is your first point, Assam Rifles. I maintained I maintain that without the Assam Rifles, we are at a, at a very, very huge disadvantage to the Indian Army Eastern Command in the event of uh, Chinese activities in the border. So therefore, I am of the opinion that Assam Rifles has got such a rapport with the people of Northeast India Assam Rifle has got history of so many more than 200 years in Northeast India. Assam Rifle has got the culture of Indian military or the military culture in every way. So we'll be losing this, uh, this fine force in case, not only losing, we, we will not have the reserves in the event of uh, some kind of conflict in our northern borders. So I really endorse your views. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Amule. It was a wonderful question and I think very well answered by uh, KH. Uh, all it is, now time is running out. So I'll just say, all is left for me to say a very, very big thank you to you, KH. It was a wonderful conversation and a lot of doubts were cleared. And uh, I think uh, many of uh, those in the participants who haven't gone through this book, uh, they would like to read this book. And this book, uh, I would, in fact, uh, I'll go a step further. It is for young officers, they must own this book and they should, they must try to imbibe the values which we have tried to uh, mention in this book. 
So thank you for sparing so much of your time. Uh, I'm the we in Strive are really honored with your presence. Uh, I'm also thankful to all the participants, particularly uh, uh, Sudhakar and uh, uh, Amule for asking such uh, very, very relevant questions. I'm sure many more have questions, but uh, uh, well, time is a constraint. So uh, you can share your questions with us in the Strive. We'll share it with uh, the general and get his reply. And uh, then we will share it with you. Uh, I also would like to say a very, very sincere thanks to all the participants other than those who listen to us. And I think it's a, it's a wonderful gesture on their part. Uh, my sincere thanks to Headquarters Central Command for uh, making our entire technical support system so good that we can conduct such webinars with these. And a special thanks to RP, your regimental officer. <laughs> By God, he's, he's, he's one of the best we have. Uh, not only he provided the technical support, I think the way he pushed me to conduct all these things, the strive today is because of RP. One man army he is. Uh, thank you, RP, for all that which you have done. Uh, this uh, uh, we, we, we will continue. On behalf of Australia, I would like to assure all our participants that uh, our objective is to uh, keep discussing issues related to national security and uh, uh, nation building. So uh, please uh, join more and more and do share your views uh, and uh, so that we can make it a hot and happening place, continue to improve from where we are. And uh, your support is of great help to us. Uh, this uh, brings me to the end of this webinar. Thanks once to everyone once again to everyone. God bless. God speak to each one of you. And particular thank you to KH. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. We'll close the recording soon now. And we'll come back if you have any conversation. Thank you very much. Sir.